everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we are taking a look at the third edition of the Batman miniature game from Night Models. Um, this edition is a enormous box of stuff, so much so that while I would sometimes do like an unboxing like I do in these videos, I decided instead I was going to keep that part for the... Um, the what you call it the uh, the on the paint table for today. Let's so go up here in the cards. You can check it out and see what the the stuff looks like. See all the the, the, the like the cardstock terrain, the miniatures I painted, um, and get my overview of like how I did it and the the resin and stuff like that that comes in the box. So. What we're going to focus on here is going to be the rules of the game, how it's changed, what's new, and um, what is different. Because this is quite a different game from first and second edition Batman miniature game. Um, and yeah, let's talk about that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dive into uh, an overview of the game, just the components that you get in the box. We're going to look at all this stuff that's here in front of me, um, and then kind of walk you through the rules. So. Uh, it does have a start here book. This is super handy. I like it when they include these in a box set. Um, and this one is pretty much exactly what you'd think. It's it's, they did one thing I didn't like, <laughs> and they put this very important part at the back. I, I get why they put it at the back, but actually this is the first thing people are going to look for. So the fact is that some of the instructions in here is great. Um, the miniatures themselves are in a soft resin. Um, I, I would say probably on the same like softness scale as the Song of Ice and Fire PVC. Uh, which I didn't have any problem with. It does not use plastically. You're going to use cyanacrylate uh, super glues to glue it together. Um, and as long as you have a fresh blade in your hobby knife, you shouldn't have any problems with, with cleaning the mold lines and cleaning the flash. I think one ha thing happens is when you have any kind of like bend to resin, when it's not like wood, when you can't kind of like scrape it and peel it, um, it can tear. And so if you're using a dull hobby knife, you can get really frustrated with it. Uh, I had no problems because I've used, I've used soft PVC vinyl um, and, and resin before. So I just got a brand new fresh blade for my hobby knife cleaned everything up and got some paint on it, as you can see up here in the cards today. Um, but yeah, it could, if you've not worked with that kind of stuff before, it could be frustrating, so I highly recommend you, you know, just make sure you have the right equipment for when you start building these things. Uh, and yeah, so you're gonna get um, some big giant base minis. You get a Batman and a Joker. Uh, both of these can be, well, the Joker can be on a 40 mil base, which is what I did, I didn't, I didn't put them on this big giant base. Uh, Harley Quinn on a 40 mil base, and then a, a, what is it, a Cheap Gordon on a big 60 mil base. I, again, I'm gonna just make this terrain piece. <laughs> I'm gonna paint up the bat signal because it's super cool as a terrain piece. I'm not gonna, I didn't put Jim on it, I put Jim on a 40 mil base. You get Deadshot, you get a bunch of cops, I get a detective, one, two, three officers, and a good old Bullock. And then you get um, six goons to go with the Joker, and some nice assembly instructions for doing it all. Again, nice they put this stuff in here. Um, and then a huge amount of like cardstock terrain. Um, and what's nice is, uh, well, the previous editions came with buildings, which was nice. They're a big, big, blocky, chunky terrain. There's some low-lying scatter here, so you can actually kind of make like a really cool carnival board. You get four big pavilions, three big booths, um, some signage, and some um, barriers to, to play with. And some simple instructions. They are no glue required. Uh, all these little locking, like I, I did actually glue all the tabs and locking pieces to keep them together, but you could easily do it without any glue. Just be careful you follow the instructions in order, because especially for this one, um, there's some stuff you don't want to forget while you're doing it. Uh, and the readme first is basically a quick start of the rules. So Joker and the broadcast, the basic game sequence, and then some getting started missions that all are played on a smaller table. So small crews is just a Jeep CP cop, an officer Merkel, and a Sergeant Harvey Bullock, and then a thug, thug four, and thug five. So it's like three models on three models. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune, so it's a cop, Officer Merkel, Sergeant Harvey Bullock, and Batman versus thug one, thug two, thug three, thug four, thug five, and Deadshot. Um, and then just continues to add models basically to play the game. And gives you some cool story mission stuff. So, very handy. It is a good read me first. Um, I just just flip to the back. <laughs> when you're looking for instructions, don't go without them. Flip to the back and start with that. Uh, and then we have the full core rulebook. So this is a this is the complete new edition of the rules. This is going to be an adjustment for some people, I think, because there's certain things that you're not going to find here. So, for instance, there isn't a massive equipment list. There isn't a scenario generator um, or like the scenario guides and all the scenario rules because all that's been replaced by cardboard. So. Um, I'm just identifying the cards. We have our new stack cards. The one thing I do love about them, they carry this over from second edition, is all the special rules are defined in the back. So if a thing has a rule on the front, you can see what it actually does in the back. Um, you're going to get your uh, plot cards, your mission objective cards. So you actually just you, you deal these out. So don't lose your accessories because they're not in the rule book. Uh, so for instance, for your deployment, you're going to deal one of these. You have the initiative, and that'll be deployment for the game. So showdown. Um, you're going to have an event card. And these are just a game enhancement, so if you want, when you play a game, uh, at the beginning of the game, you flip an event, and this is in place usually for the whole game. So in the spotlight, at the beginning of the raise the plan phase, beginning with the player with the initiative, each player choose a different street lamp marker, choose a direction, then move the chosen street lamp D6 in that, in that direction. Uh, they cannot be removed during the game. So you can't, basically there's, the street lamps aren't street lamps, they're spotlights in the sky and they're moving around, which I thought was kind of cool. 
Uh, and then you have your objective cards, and this replaces all the previous kind of objective scenario rules that were in the old game. Um, now what you have is you have uh, a, a deck of 20 cards you're going to build to try and score objectives off of. And you're going to deal out uh, a hand of four objective cards. There is generic ones that anybody can use, uh, which is handy for people who don't have a, a deck yet. And then there's Batman ones and Joker ones right now. Um, the new uh, factions, when they come out, supposedly are going to come with new decks. So you should be able to get a deck for the, the new faction boxes as they release. Uh, and then we have a rule book. And you can see here, in loving memory of Gustavo Adolfo Cuadero, uh, Quadrado, sorry. I think that's really cool. They, they memorialist uh, was a designer who passed away, unfortunately. Um, and then we have uh, our game concepts and stuff. So, <sighs> general overview before we dive into the, the game. What has changed? The game is shorter. It's only four turns long. Um, it is much more streamlined. The raise the plan phase is radically different in that you don't actually uh, have to assign individual dice. And I'll be honest, I really like that. I didn't like anything to detach me from the game for a while. Standing in silence for like 10 minutes assigning dice to every model was not something that was my favorite part of the previous editions of the game. Um, what you're going to do now is you're going to uh, assign um, uh, an extra effort marker, basically, of four, four people who can, who can act more than normal. Uh, and then you're going to play through the round, activating back and forth with past counters, just like in the previous edition. Uh, the one big change, though, is that everyone just gets one action. So you pick a single action for them to do, unless they're marked with one of those four markers, where they can do additional stuff. Which is nice, because it inherently balances spam. So if you're spamming something, all the spam models can only do one thing. Whereas in the previous edition, the spam models could activate and assign their dice however they wanted. Their willpower dice would go over they want, just like anybody else. Um, now, if you're taking tons of models, only four of them are going to get to do multiple things. So having four powerhouse models that can do four things, versus having a ton of little guys that can only do one thing, can be very useful. Uh, I've got all our markers, and you get a ton, you'll see this in the other paint table, an absolute ton of markers in here. Every marker you could possibly want. You get measuring widgets, ammo crates, loot markers, medical supplies, venom containers, and they're both marked so they're player one, player two. Snitch markers, explosive teeth, sewers, poison fish, street lamps, gas canisters, blind, stun, paralyzed, fire, freeze, cooled, hypnotized, scared, various poisons, the crown for your boss, magazine markers, your resource marker, your event marker, Audacity, these are the how you mark uh, which characters are going to get additional actions. Suspect markers, which is where you're going to place down. They're basically like scheme markers in Malfo. Pass markers for when you need to go and mark player one, player two. Your stun damage, your injury damage, uh, movement markers, enervating markers, attack modifiers, and defense modifiers. Numerical markers for when you need them during the game. KOs, knockdown, back claws, you've used a back claw, and then terror. And all of that comes in here in like in like a huge amount. Like I've, I've <laughs> there's, you get an absolutely crazy amount of cardboard in here. Um, you also get your templates. A double sided templates, a spray template, and a blast template, uh, and all the cards I described. So, a huge amount of components. Uh, and it's worth noting too uh, for the crew selection point both crews in this box are 350 rep and 1500 funding. So, they are standard game size crews. You can crack this box open and play against just about anybody uh, in the new edition. So what do you need? You need some night models, you need a city game board where the action takes place, counters, markers, and templates, retractable measuring tape, six sided dice, and one or two of a different color for your strength die. Uh, the game area, it's a 3x3 three three still, markers and counters. Um, you're using the ones in the box typically, but it's taking these other things if you need to. Uh, measuring distances, use your measure stick for most uh, non-specific like situations, but it's always closest point to furthest point, so you're never measuring over your own measuring tape to get additional base width distance. Uh, within means at least part of the objective uh, model base lies within the measure distance. Completely within means the whole thing is inside the measure distance. Uh, D6 is D2, D6 is D3, 6 is being defined, modifying dice. Um, so rolling D6 plus 1 will give you between a 2 and a 7. That's actually the, the modified number. Uh, modifiers that multiply or divide, uh, then add or subtract. So it's using usual obviously ped mass stuff. Uh, Rerolls, you're going to roll it again. You always count the second roll. You never get to reroll, reroll. Fractions and rounding, you're always going to round down. And then randomizing, sometimes you have to randomize, take the closest number of dice or number markers and just pull them out. All right, new cards. So what do we got? We got our name. Uh, that's going to be the secret identity, typically. So you can never have two models of the same name in a faction, so you can't have two Bruce Waynes. But you could have like a Bruce Wayne and a uh, Damian Wayne, or a Bruce Wayne and a Thomas Wayne. You know, if you're using Flashpoint Batman. Um, an exception to this rule is if someone has the unknown or classified name, you may include several such characters as long as they have different aliases. So you couldn't use two unknowns that are both Joker, but you could use two unknowns that have different aliases. Uh, you get your base size, so what size base you're on, so this Bruce Wayne's on a 40. Uh, your rank, which could be leader, sidekick, free agent, henchman, or vehicle. Um, for the, the course of crew building now, you can have, you have to have one leader, you, are, so you can have maximum one leader, 
um, and typically they're the boss. You can have a sidekick. Uh, if you have only one sidekick, they could be a boss, and then the, you can make a second sidekick too, so you can have like two, two sidekicks. One free agent for every 150 points of game size, as many henchmen as you want, and a single vehicle for every 150 points of game size. Uh, affiliations, so what, what your, your crew is basically, your symbol. Uh, rivals, so any nemesis you have, and they can never be included with the same um, the same symbol. So if you have the rival symbol, it means that if that crew, if that, if that model is in a crew, it's not eligible to be in your same crew with you. Your reps, how many points you are, and then your funding, how much dollar dues you cost. Funding is still $500 for every 100 points or part thereof. Um, and then, no, is it? I'm not sure. Yes. 500 points for every 150 or part thereof, that's right, because 350 is 1500. Uh, traits, so the things that are known about you, your special rules, like your bat armor, uh, bat claw, and like I said before, all that stuff is defined in the back, which is nice, there's no rulebook flipping, which is important because none of the traits are defined in this book. There is no big wall of what traits do. This is a very slim rulebook. So, yeah, there's gonna be a, <laughs> I'll get to that at the end. The backwards compatibility stuff in this game from the previous edition is gonna be a little thin. Um, because there's no list of what traits are. Like, if, you better hope you have a trait on one of these cards, because <laughs> you'll be able to see what it does. Uh, your basic skills. So your basic skills are things like your willpower. Um, your willpower is your, your stat. Now, willpower doesn't give you a number of actions anymore. It doesn't assign counters. It's just the stat for long willpower checks. Endurance still honey hits you can take before you get knocked out, and it's also for uh, endurance checks when you get knocked out and need to come back to life. Um, number 14 is your attacks. So that's uh, how many attack dice you roll in melee or with shooting. Your strength, which is um, your number you need to roll it on the strength die. So when you make an attack now, you roll additional die, and that's the strength die, and it can't be blocked usually in melee. Um, your defense, uh, sorry, your attacks is still the number that need, people need to roll to pair you as well when they hit back. Your defense is your defense stat, so the number of people need to hit you. Um, and then this uh, special category, so special skill, that's how many dice you get for a special. So you use your special now for all your stat checks, and you discard uh, any die of your choice. So if I was going to make a willpower check, I'd roll three dice, because I have a special of three, and discard any one I want. So I'll discard the six, and I get a seven, which is less than my willpower of nine, so I pass. Um, if I was knocked out, so for instance, if Batman gets knocked out, he wants to come back, he's got a willpower, um, a special of three. You're minus one special when you're KO'd. So you'd roll two dice and try to roll under an eight. I rolled a nine, so I don't wake up there. But if I'd gotten my three dice, I could have discarded one of them, discarded the four, and I would have passed. Uh, and that's it, that's your front of your stat line. And then you got any weapons you have too, so like he's got his bat wings. And that has stayed basically the same as the previous edition. Name of the attack, uh, what kind of damage it does. Um, it's uh, number of attack dice it rolls, it's number of ammo that it can do, and then any special rolls like short range throwing and light. Other basic rules, it is line of sight. Uh, you can see 360 from your uh, unstructured line between two models. And it's nighttime, no more than 12 inch range for anything, unless you're next to a light. If you're next to a light within four inches of it, people can see you no matter what. Contact means base to base, models on higher levels, typically your volume is going to be in base to base. Uh, and then skill rolls, willpower roll, endurance roll, and then sometimes special skill rolls. Now, an opposed skill roll, sometimes when you use a special skill, you have to make an opposed roll um, against the target's skill value. This is called an opposed roll. In this instance, the sum of the dice uh, as before, but then the, uh, this time the sum of the two dice must be, must be greater. So if you're trying to beat someone's will, right, make a will check, you roll your three special dice, and you discard the lowest one because you're trying to beat their will. Because to pass it would be to roll under, you're trying to roll higher when you're, when you're doing an opposed one. So you're still using your special stat, but they're using their, their willpower or whatever is like a defensive stat. The game rules. All right, sequence of play. So uh, how are the rounds? <laughs> they sound really similar, but they operate really differently to the previous edition. So take the lead. Used to be draw something out of a bag. Now it's roll d6. If you roll higher, you have the lead for the round. If you tie the person that went last last round, goes first this round, or chooses. Uh, raise the plan. All the players decide in secret how and will the, their models, uh, in which way their models will act. There's be activation markers between them. So you're going to put activation markers down to see who's got what. Um, and they'll determine which models have the most impact on the round. And then execute the plan. So your activation markers are going to be things like your, um, your get, get extra actions. And then execute the plan. Players activate their models and resolve actions with them. So move, fight, shoot. Player alternates between one model at a time. Uh, starting with the model player to take the lead and then so on, going back and forth. You do get pass markers. You go to the difference in models you have and you gain pass markers when models get knocked out. Uh, recount, this place phase provides an opportunity for the models to recover from injuries or for knocked out. So everybody, everybody just loses a stun now during the recount phase, no matter what. There's no testing for it. And on top of that, if you're KO'd, you can make the willpower check to see if you come back to life. Uh, and then also, you, some things might uh, check victory during the recount phase. It'll tell you, like there'll be a little clock symbol on your objective to see if it happens then. And then the new round starts. So there's only four rounds in the game, which means after that, you're going to do another take the lead and see, what, see what's happening. Uh, raising the plan. So now... Uh, 
Uh, note that in the next phase, all models that are able to activate will perform a movement action, a tactical action, a special action. Uh, but to do this, each player takes four audacity markers and places them on their models. Models chosen must be eligible to activate, so they can't be KO'd, for instance. If you have less than four models able to activate, you can place audacity markers on as many as you can. Model with an audacity marker can perform one of each type of action when they activate instead of just one. So. For everybody who's activating, they're going to do one of the one of the actions. So, so one of those things. They can either move, they can do a tactical action, which is usually attack or shoot or something like that, or make a manipulate, or a special action, which is usually something defined by their card. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. Like you, you, you're going to go back and forth doing that stuff, and the audacity marker is going to give you models that can push a little bit further. And then you start with the person with the initiative. You get to activate a model. Um, and when you activate a model, it's activated. It can perform one of the following actions: movement, tactical, or special. If the model is an audacity marker, it can do all three in any order but can't do any twice. Um, and then passing activation, player one, player two, you get a pass marker. Um, passive skills, some skills are, uh, games are passive, which means the player does not have to declare their use. They're commonly used during a rival activation as opposed to an attack, uh, as a response to attack or when a special rule is used. These skills don't usually use uh, models activation, each skill will provide full instructions for its use, so things like dodge, if you're gonna dodge shots and come after you. And the recount phase, uh, activate any traits that should be uh, used at the beginning of the recount phase, starting with the player that does initiative. Uh, discard spent resource cards. So if you've used any resource cards, um, which is to say the second half of all of your objective cards. So the top half, the yellow, is how you score them. So this one would be a protect one. It's scored in the third step, which means it's in the uh, action phase. That's an instant with a little star. So reveal an enemy suspect marker at least six inches away from any of your models with a cop trait, uh, with the exception of the model revealing the marker. And then you'd score your three VPs for doing it. You only ever have one of these in there. Wrong place, kid. It's a Harvey Book only card. <laughs> so you have to use Harvey Book to, to use this one. Um, it unlocks with him, but it's super cool because it's got, it's basically just a 3VP, like, I'm a crooked cop. <laughs> and if there's no other cop nearby, I can just put a suspect marker down and, and just, like, frame that guy for whatever he's going to do. Um, but as a resource, you're going to get three resource points during the raise the plan phase. Or sorry, you're going to get three resource points during the recount phase at the end of this, but you'll spend them to do these things too. So he can spend a resource um, to spend this card. Add one of the rate of fire of a range attack performed by a model with the name Harvey uh, Bullock. Place an enemy suspect marker in contact with the target of the attack, ignoring the normal minimum distance between markers. So basically, he can add one to his shots and then place this uh, enemy suspect marker in contact with the target of the attack. So like, he gives the enemy a suspect marker, but he gets plus one to his gunshots because he's a he's a bad guy, right? He's not really a good guy. Um, and you'll discard those cards when they're, um, when they're done. And then you get your refill your resources later on. So you can spend your objective basically to do cool things during the turn, like little feats, mini feats and stuff, or to score points. Uh, scoring objectives that are specified should be done at the end of the round. Uh, you can never score two objective cards with the same name during the same rounds. You couldn't score like multiples of the same card. All models still in play that are not uh, KO'd should now eliminate a stun. Uh, review the condition uh, to finish the game. And if these conditions are met, check the score to see who's winner. That's the most VPs. Uh, remove activated markers and unused pass markers. Refill your pool of resource points to three. Discard up to one objective card from your hand uh, if you wish. Shuffle the deck and then draw four, or up to four. And now start a new round with take the lead. And then there's your action. So stats have changed quite a bit. And again, this is going to cause a bit of friction probably with the previous edition in that the, the movement stats just a fixed number now. That's how many inches Batman can move. When he's restricted, so if he's got to move through difficult terrain or he's got to climb something or there's some kind of like thing impeding his movement, it's, his, it's this stat minus four. And multiple restrictions could make you go down even more. So if he got restricted twice, he'd be down to movement two. Um, most models, if you look at them, are movement eight. Some are movement 10. The lighter and like stabbier you are, you're going to be moving higher. Uh, but it does mean that there's a bit of math to do, and I, I, there's no specific guidelines in this book, but I, I have heard that Knight has some guidelines um, on their website and stuff for like how to how to kind of like know what your guys from second edition or first edition do in this edition. And I'm not sure what they are, but but I know there's some modifications you can make to use your current cards. Uh, movement actions, so that's the one action you can do. Uh, there's a difference in movement and placing. Place is like a teleport, so if you get placed somewhere within range, you just go within that range. Now if you're moving, you have to fit through the gaps uh, up to your movement distance. Uh, and you just measure with a movement stick or with a, a measuring gauge. Uh, and then if you're impaired, like I said, if you're going through an obstacle or something like that, difficult ground, uh, jumping or climbing, you're gonna move through distance minus four inches. Um, and then you can go over any obstacle less than an inch with any kind of like difficult or reduction in movement because you don't care. Uh, and if you fall, if you fall inside your basic movement distance, you're fine. You don't suffer any damage. If you go more than your basic movement distance, you take two blood because <laughs> you get hurt. And if you go double your basic movement distance, you're just a casualty. You just snap your neck and you die. <laughs> so be careful you don't jump off um, by accident. And if you make a movement action when you're knocked down, you might automatically uh, stand up, but you count as being impaired movement. So it slows you down like for your total move, but you get to get up for free. 
And then tactical actions, they're attack and manipulate. So attack is typically making a range for a melee attack. Remember, you're not going to move when you do this. You're just going to get to do that. Um, a model can only attack using one of these types. You can't do both in the same round unless you have a special rule that says you can do so. So you might have uh, something like, um, I think it's combined with melee, or I think Robin has one of those where he can like throw wing dings and also fight in the same round. Batman might have that. Some of the Batmans might have that too. Uh, ones are always failed and sixes are always hits. And then a melee attack is going to be you're going to roll dice equal to your melee score. So if I was Batman, I'd roll five dice. Um, and one different color dice would be a, 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 um, a strength die. And everything I got that was higher than, let's say, Joker's defense of four would be a hit. So uh, I got none, two. So I got two hits. The strength die didn't land. Uh, and that's going to be total number of hits. He could then defend equal to his... Um, Defense stat, but he had to roll fives to try and defend with four dice. And he defends one of them. So one would then get through and do some damage. Um, you get melee modifiers for things like being outnumbered, your minus one to your dice pool, basically. And the defense roll is you roll dice equal to your defense skill, and if everything equals and beats, you cancel a die. The only exception is any hits grow by the strength die, they can't be blocked by any means. The strength die always hits. Melee weapons can add to your stats or give you special rules. And then finally, there's effort. And this is a totally new rule. Um, that allows little guys to take on big guys. I think it's actually pretty cool. You can, so everyone has an effort limit of three. You can take a maximum of three stun markers, and for every stun marker you voluntarily take, you can add a die to your melee attacks. You can remove an attack die per um, stun marker from the enemy's melee attack if they're targeting you. So you can use this on the, the, the attack or the defense. You can perform special rules um, or traits that require effort as payment. So some things like power armor require it. So like there'll be rules down the road that you have to take stun damage to like unlock a rule. And you can force a target to roll one less dice than usual uh, when performing a skill ability for a skill check. Uh, for example, if you target a model with the hypnotized trait and it would normally roll four dice for its willpower roll, you can spend two dice uh, to make it a 2d6 roll instead. These markers count towards your total damage threshold, so making an effort that does not count as being damaged for any other rules. A model may not receive um, stun markers if it would make you a KO. So you can't do effort that would actually knock you out. And then all models start with an effort limit of three. This is the maximum amount they can do in the single t uh, uh, action, ability, attack, or defense improvement. Uh, model reduces its effort limit by one for every three damage markers it has on it. So if for every three blood you have, you're basically able to make like one less effort, take one less stun to do things. And then a range attack, um, you have to be in line of sights, so you have to have at least an ammo remaining, and the attacking model can't be in base contact when anyone is not KO'd. And then roll die uh, for your rate of fire. Each attack die that's equal or greater than the target's defense dice is a hit. Uh, you always roll strength die for it as well. Uh, the strength dies can be cancelled, however, for ranged weapons. Uh, and then it eats up an ammo from your magazine. It's pretty much the same as the previous edition. Uh, but there are some attack modifiers. If you move before you attack, um, you're going to be minus two to your rate of fire. Uh, it's not reducing it right to one, though. So some guns are actually still going to get quite a few shots when they're firing, regardless of the fact that they're losing rate of fire. Uh, if you're out of range, so if you have short or medium range, you're minus one die. So that's actually cool because it means you can use a pistol that's at inches now. You're not just like point blanking people with pistols that are short range anymore, but you're going to be one less dice. Um, cover, the target is partially obscured by scenery. You get one less dice. Um, subtract a die from the attack roll, firing blind. So if you want to shoot somebody that's out in the dark without having line of sight because of the night rule, you can do it, but you're minus two dice to the roll. And then dodging, some special rules uh, like dodge or acrobatic light to evade range attacks, and they'll deduct dice from their attack roll. Uh, so dodge doesn't work quite the way it used to, where you roll defense dice to try and counter it. Dodge now is a reduction in the total number of shots. And the strength die. Every time you perform an attack, uh, you must add a strength die to the roll. This is a die of the different color than the attack dice. Uh, strength die represents the natural power of a weapon. The strength die is rolled along part of the attack roll. However, the strength die scores a successful hit of equal beats their strength value. So Batman's strength die will always work on a 3+, plus, no matter what the defense of the target is. Um, and it can't be blocked, usually. Same with Joker, has always work on a 4+. plus. Um, a successful hit with the strength die cannot be avoided in any way, but it uh, otherwise treated as a normal hit. Some special rules prevent the attacker from rolling the strength die uh, at all, but once rolled, a successful hit cannot be blocked or negated. If any effect nullifies the strength die, an attacker trait by default only rolls the strength die, it's replaced by an attack die. Um, if a rule requires you to remove dice from the attack roll, the type of dice that is removed depends on the attack type. For ranged attacks, the strength die is always removed first. For melee attacks, the strength die cannot be removed unless the rule specifically requires it. And if the strength die is a natural six, uh, then you're gonna critical hit, you're knocking somebody down, unless it has a crit effect, in which case you pick which of the crits you wanna do. So you could still knock somebody down, but you could also unlock like a crit stun or crit bleed or something like that. Uh, as soon as you're knocked out, you can't be activated, uh, but you'll have a chance to recover during the re recount phase. Uh, you can't defend yourself if you use traits. Your minus one penalty to your attack, defense, and special skills. Uh, so easier to hit you, basically. And does not count as being in contact for purposes of outnumbering, performing range attacks, whatever. 
Uh, you can't be KO'd and knocked down at the same time, but a KO'd model becomes knocked down when it recovers. When a model's KO each time it receives any kind of damage through attacker effects, it must add additional blood damage for each hit. So once you're, once you're knocked down, basically, you're just going to take blood. Uh, remember, if any time a model accumulates enough blood markers to be its uh, equal to its endurance, it becomes a casualty. And then manipulate. Okay, so manipulate actions are typically done to place uh, suspect markers. So things like, it's like dropping a ski marker in Malfo. Uh, you put it on the, on the tabletop, you cannot place a suspect marker inside or within two inches of your own deployment zone, or within four inches of another friendly suspect marker. Note, players cannot have more than eight suspect markers on the table at any given time, so no spamming them. Uh, you can reveal a suspect marker with manipulate. Uh, an enemy suspect marker can be revealed and then removed. Uh, use sewers. If there's a sewer marker, you can manipulate to enter the sewers and that'll be explained later on. Um, additionally, there can be special traits and scenario conditions that require you to manipulate action. Uh, if you're within eight inches of your boss, you get a free manipulate action in addition to your normal actions you're doing for the turn. So it means that the boss can like encourage his peons to basically do things and, and schemes and stuff. And it does make the boss more valuable not going out there by himself. If your boss dies, you can nominate a sub-boss basically to take over, but the range of their aura for additional manipulates is only four inches instead of eight. Uh, special actions, the third category is only a card that's special, um, usually uses the special trait. And any extra actions, um, as a result of uh, some traits, your models can receive extra actions. Uh, they may be taken in addition to those normally permitted. If a rule uh, specifies a type of extra action, for like instance manipulate, then only that type can be taken. So you can't use special action to do something that's not required. And then recovery. Recovery is going to be your normal KO test. You become knocked down. So if I had a special of three, I'd be minus one special die because of my being KO'd. I roll under my endurance, I'm fine. I get back, I become, well, I remove a stun, I become knocked down. Uh, and that's basically it. So the road to victory. Now, this is probably where the biggest changes have come in um, in the game, and that's probably going to be based upon the fact that there's no like actual scenarios in this book. It's all based on cards. There's going to be all kinds of like um, uh, new like uh, sort of like procedures for scoring, and it's a lot more deck driven than in previous versions. All right, so now diving into the road to victory. Uh, how do you actually win the game? So it's objective cards. Um, in this game, the crews of Gotham City will fight relentlessly. In the Batman Miniature game, uh, it's represented by forming an objective card deck of 20 cards. Uh, the cards have a double function. They can be played as objectives or resources, like I said earlier. Um, they have a name, a crew icon, so the unaligned ones won't have a crew icon. They can also sometimes have a uh, name of a person they have to be affiliated to. Uh, number of copies, how many you can have. That's this little guy right here. You can have three of comb through everything in your, um, your deck. Objective, so number four, uh, that's the thing you need to do in order to do it. So for this one, for instance, reveal an enemy suspect marker. Uh, additionally, when you score this objective, you may draw one additional objective card, then discard one of them. So you get to hand shuffle a little bit. And when you discard an objective card, you actually don't put it in a discard pile. It goes at the bottom of the deck and can be shuffled in again. The only way cards get removed is if the text says to remove them, or if they've been scored and go in the score pile, or being used, burned as resources and go in the resource pile. So you can't just like deck yourself for objectives. Um, when to play them, so the timing. So like for instance, one is during take the lead, two is during the raise the plan, and three is during the execute the plan, and fourth is the recount. So three is typically during the action phase, four is at the end. Uh, when to score, so when does the score happen? If it's a little star, it's gonna be instantly. If it's a time clock, it's uh, during the round. Uh, if it's special, it'll be set in the text. Uh, you can spend as a resource, so how many resource points? You have three per turn, uh, it'll cost you to do it. And then what it does. Uh, and then the objective type, so not all objectives are the same. Some are like a protect, which is the vest here. Gun is violence, control is um, a little cog, and threat is a exclamation point. Those are important for your plot cards. If you're going to be using the advanced rules for plot decks, you get to basically, it's like an achievement basically. If you do X number of, let's say, violence objectives or protect objectives, and, and certain things in certain order, then you get to unlock a new ability. So your crew can actually power up midway through the game when you're using the, uh, the plot cards. And then using objective cards, if you discard it, it goes to the bottom of your deck. Uh, face down, if you remove it, you take it out completely, it uses an objective, it goes into the accomplished objective pile, it uses a resource, goes into the spent resource pile. At the beginning of the game, uh, you draw four objective cards, you may discard one uh, at the beginning and redraw until you have the same number of four up to four, um, and then whenever you discard a card or play a card or use a resource, you draw until you have four in your hand. So you should always have four in your hand. Now you take three resource point markers and place them in the objective deck, these are the ones you spend each round, they refill. Uh, plays objective, there will be a timing thing usually, which is when you play it. Um, and then, of course, you can only play one objective card per activation on a single model. So, uh, and you don't ever have one of the same like name per round. So you can't score multiple objectives the same type off the same thing. You couldn't flip one uh, suspect marker, for instance, to do like six different things. Um, 
And then of course, if a card that has already been played cannot be resolved, because sometimes things will be, like you'll, you'll stack effects. This does use a stack method. So let's say you're about to do an objective and someone uses it as a resource card to stop you from doing it. What happens is you stack those and the one on top gets revealed first. So the latest card played is always the first resolved in order. And if by the time you get to the bottom of the, the resolve pile, that objective can no longer be scored, it goes back in your, it gets discarded, not, not put and spent. And then the plot deck, the plot deck, you're going to pull four plot cards. Now, plot cards can again have an affiliation or unaffiliated. Um, you have to pick one to be active at the start of the game, the thing you're trying to achieve, and then shuffle the rest and put them down. Once you've achieved your open plot, which is the requirements, so like Chaos Agent here, it's Joker only. Complete an objective, complete a violence objective. At the end of a round, the total objective cards are accomplished between both players an odd number. If you do that, so if you've got three total, you have to have an objective. One has to be a violence objective, and it has to be an odd number. Um, once per round, when a player discards an objective card, they must discard one additional card. So basically, you can force people to dump objectives for the rest of the game once per round. Um, and then at the end of the recount phase, round four, the game ends. And at the end of any round in which the uh, one card has no models that, to activate, then it ends. And when the game's over, the player with the highest number of victory points is the winner. So you don't want to accidentally table your opponent when you're down on VPs because you're not going to win. <laughs> You'll actually lose the game. Uh, and that's it. Uh, forming the crew is pretty much the same as normal. Boss and affiliations, so you pick an affiliation on a boss, they get the crown, which means that they have the boss special rules, so they can inspire within 8 inches, everybody gets additional manipulate action when you do that. Um, if the boss is removed from the game, you get a, a baby boss and they have a 4 inch range for that. Uh, you can include one leader, you can have one sidekick, however, if you don't select any leader models, you can have a second sidekick, you can have one free agent, you can include any number of henchmen, but no more than one of the same name, and a single vehicle. Every 150 points of uh, over 350 rep, or part thereof your crew may include one additional free agent and vehicle. So at 351 to 500, you have two. So this is a bit of a change from previous edition where some crews can be tons of free agents. I don't actually know how the team rules fold in any of this right now. It's not super clearly defined in this book. It might be out there on the internet right somewhere and I haven't seen it. So I'm not really sure how like, when there's teams of like all free agents almost and all sidekicks like Teen Titans, how the crew building's really gonna work, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, when a model has more than one rank listed on its card, the player can choose which rank uh, applies to that crew. It's so like Tai Al Gruel might be a uh, leader in the League of Assassins, uh, but should be a sidekick somewhere else. Uh, and then funding and equipment, for every 150 rep you have, it's 500 funding, so at 350 you're going to have 1500. Um, and any of your crew's funding is deducted when you hire a model, and of course anything left over can spend on equipment. Um, once you have uh, all the models and rep added up, you have your stash. Uh, for a full list of the equipment available to your crew, check out the free compendium at nightmodels.com. So it's not in here, but there is an equipment list in the compendium. You'll want to go and download that as an addendum. And then forming your objective deck, it has to be 20 cards. The deck cannot include more general cards with no affiliation than uh, unique uh, to your crew cards. So at least 10 of your cards are going to have to be crew cards, and the other 10 are going to have to be somewhere else. That does make it a bit hard for, non, for, for crews that don't have cards right now to play which is weird. So you can't just use all generic cards, only half can be generic, but if you don't have a crew set yet, it's basically if you're not playing, I think league, the league ones are out now or they're out next week. If you're not playing Batman or Joker right now, you can't actually make an objective deck. <laughs> um, you cannot, um, sorry, no more than half the cards in the deck can be single cards. Uh, so those cards that are on multiple copies, you can't have more than half of them be singles. So you can have five singles basically, sorry, 10 singles, and then the rest have to be multiple copies. You may not include multiple cards with the same name, except where the card clearly instructs you to have several copies. In this case, you must include the number of copies specified, no more, no less. In addition, some models can add uh, additional objective cards to the deck. These uh, differ from the rest of them. They have a subtitle, so like a name or a rank. Uh, the subtitle matches the name or rank of someone in the crew, so like the Harvey Bullock one. And the rank icon matches the rank of that model. And then you make your plot deck. Uh, as objective cards, some models can add additional plots. They have to have the subtitle and the rank icon. Um, it's always going to be four cards and no dupes. Just, oh, sorry, it's actually sorry, it's any four plot cards from your collection, as long as they don't include more general cards than those with your crew's affiliations. They have to be at least half crew oriented again. Uh, and that's it. And then we're praying for the game. So uh, you're going to put your 3 3 board together, put the scenery down, then urban furniture. That's changed. It's two street lamps and two uh, manholes now per player. So it's not six anymore, it's only four. Uh, deployment zone is going to be a card. So you're going to shuffle out a card to see what your deployment zone is. And you'll get one of these. Again, they're not in this book, so you need, don't want to lose these cards. Um, choose plot cards, optional. Uh, sorry, choose objective cards. Uh, choose, sorry, choose events, choose objective cards, choose plot cards, and then deploy your crews. Uh, deployment same as before, half and half. So you put half down, your opponent puts half down, you put your half down, they put their half down. Um, and then, yeah, sewer markers, uh, they can be placed within eight inches of another, sorry, they cannot, they can be placed within eight inches of each other and no closer than two to any um, board edge. No sewer marker, oh sorry, they can't be placed within eight of each other. 
and within two of a board edge. Uh, deployment zones are from the encounter cards, and then street lamps can be placed. Uh, not within eight of each other, or two from any board edge. And they're just basically like from previous editions. Uh, then you're going to flip an event, as if you want the optional one, like heavy rain here. So at the start of each round, the player of the initiative must roll a d6 and a 4 plus. All range attacks roll one less die, because it's raining like crazy. Uh, and that's an optional rule, it just adds more character to the game, basically. And then drop objective cards, uh, up to four in your hands, choose plot cards, and then shovel the rest and put them down for your plot deck, and then deploy your crews. And that's it. Uh, the QA compendium and the, the doctor, the, the, the other documents should basically update this stuff for, for how to play with your, your existing models. And they must be planning on doing something because there's a million existing models in this gallery that have been out recently that like, there's my Teen Titans, <laughs> there's League of Assassins that are clearly intended to be used in this edition. So I'm not, I'm not fretting about it, it's just we'll probably have a little bit of waiting to do um, in order to get the, uh, in order to get the, um, the sort of like full skin and how to adapt what you had in set first and second edition into third edition. I do hope they do decks, like if they just did like a card deck for each faction, I think that'd be awesome. Um, it would give you the ability to just like get all your cards at once. I do like having the updated cards when I play. It's just easier to have all the rules in one place, <laughs> especially to have them be up to date as well. So what do I think? Um, I'm excited about the streamlining. I'll be honest, one of the struggles I've had in filming this game is that a lot of players didn't didn't enjoy the crunchiness of, they liked the models, but the crunchiness of the game was a bit hard for a lot of people to, to wrap their brains around. This seems like a far more intuitive game, but they have gone very resource heavy. So not having access to the cards, the decks, so for instance, the deployment deck, um, the objective decks, that's gonna hurt, basically you're, you're having to buy this box right now in order to jump into the new edition, regardless of if you want those two crews. Uh, you're gonna need the objective decks and stuff like that unless they become available separately. Um, but even the deployment decks and the plot decks and all that stuff, you'll probably acquire them over time buying stuff, but you're, to, to get like right into the new edition, this box is pretty required. Now, it's a good value box. It's fantastic value. It's got tons of terrain. It's got two complete 350 crews. Um, which the previous ones I don't think quite did. No, actually, sorry, the Suicide Squad one did, I think. But they were kind of odd numbers. And I know that the previous, the Dark Knight Returns one, or Dark Knight Rises one did as well. Um, but these are really like nice crews, uh, good quality components. I'm happy with the uh, the the miniatures in it, like the big display bases and stuff like that. And the amount of terrain is pretty slick. So I'm excited to do a lot to play. I got to finish painting my, my Joker crew, which you'll see up in the um, the cards if you go check out the on the paint table. And if you want to see all the components and stuff too, they'll I'll be up there. Uh, you can look at it. So I do think there's going to be a bit of th this is coming pretty fast on the previous edition, second edition. Uh, and second edition was still quite a like buy-in from first edition. So there are some players I think that might that might be pumping the brakes a little bit in their heads. But if you're looking at getting the game for the first time, this is definitely the most accessible edition of the game. Um, I'm excited to see how it actually plays. It looks like it's snappy and quick. Uh, there's not a lot of like that pre-turn sort of like quiet where you're humming and hawing to yourself and not really engage with your opponent or engage with what's going on. And I do I'm excited about that. I haven't played it yet, but that is something that I was previously. I, I was a bit removed from. I didn't like the idea that there was this like pre-game, <laughs> this like pre-game disconnect from like being drilled into the action. And I'm happy that it's a little more snappy going forward, but I haven't actually played it yet. So I can't 100% say. Uh, that being said, component quality is fantastic. The model's painted up super nice and um, I'm excited to, to give it a try. So we'll see if more GMG re reviews in the future. Thanks now, Nash. Have a great night. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible, uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else, and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.